second semester. You've just been through the first half of your year if you're in the northern semester, uh, northern hemisphere. Now, if you're in Australia, New Zealand, welcome. You guys are just ramping up to start your school year. And I think these points, these comments are going to apply to you as well. Here's what happens with all of us. Each time we get a new slate, whether it's the beginning of the year or the next semester, we idealize how much we can do that we didn't do before. We tend to look backwards and we go, oh, I wish I had, I wish I had, I wish I had. And then we load up the new semester with all this fantasy. Have you ever done that? I totally have done that. I will suddenly think, okay, we're going to rip through this really hard textbook, or we're going to definitely go on all those field trips, or I'm going to add kitchen chemistry science experiments for the whole spring, you know, because we didn't do any science in the fall. And here's what ends up happening. I kind of do exactly what I just did in the fall. <laughs> I might add in an element or two, but the fundamental nature of my homeschool kind of stays consistent. I don't suddenly transform into the kitchen chemistry goddess that I fantasized about during winter break. Do you hear what I'm saying? The typical way most of us treat the future is that we're going to magically become people we are not right now. Let's just pause and take that in. We treat the future like the person that's going to meet us in March is a completely different person than the person who's now living in November. Do you know what I'm talking about? So here's what I want to recommend today. And this is why, even though I'm totally down with you buying products from Brave Rider, this is how we keep, keep the doors open. This is how we pay for the staff and the life and everything that we do. I want you to envision the person you are right now in March. Not the person you hope you'll be in March. The person you are right now. And I want you to make your purchases based on that. I want you to be successful in March. I don't want you having that hangover of, oh my gosh, I overinvested and now I'm not living up to my fantasy and I'm a horrible mother and parent. Do you know what I mean? For me, one of the reasons I've never been a big fan of schedules, which is why it's hilarious that we have a calendar, but I use calendars differently than the average bear. But one of the reasons I haven't been a huge fan of scheduling is that scheduling for me is like booking an appointment with failure. <laughs> you know, it's as though I'm scheduling my own self-loathing. I'm looking ahead and saying, this is what I'm going to do. And then I get there and I don't quite do what I thought I could was capable of. And then I like really hate myself. This is why I don't like schedules. Now, some of you might really love the box checking, the checking it off. And you actually do well with planning. I'm all about planning. I'm not so much about scheduling. Planning is putting your intentions into motion. But sometimes when you then take the plan and schedule it into pockets of time, you actually undermine the beauty of the planning because you've contradicted the ability to be inspired, to take longer, to really dive in, to leave early because it didn't work out the way you imagined. You sort of set yourself up for critique as opposed to congratulations. So one of the reasons, one of the ways I use a calendar actually is to write what happened more than what's going to happen. Now, of course, for things like dental appointments and piano lessons, I have to put them on a calendar and then set the alarm or they'll never happen. In the days before digital calendars, I was a disaster. I literally missed three out of four piano lessons a month for a year with Noah till the piano teacher fired us. <laughs> She's like, I hate taking your money and you keep forgetting to come. So I, I just admit up front that I'm not a great scheduler to begin with. And some of you may be. So don't assume that my neuroses is yours. But here's what I know from all the years of working with homeschoolers. It seems to be the schedule that kills people's self-esteem. It's the feeling of not living up to your best fantasy self that makes you feel like a bad homeschooling parent. But who you are is already awesome for homeschool. You're, you already have everything you need to be a great homeschooler. And one of the ways to prove that to yourself 
<laughs> jot it down. Start recording what's actually going on in your homeschool. Spend some time planning. I'm all for reading the instructions, not glancing through them while your child is waiting for you at the table. Go ahead and park them in front of the TV, read the manual, read the guidelines, get a good sense of what they're telling you, drink a cup of tea, allow the ideas to play around in your imagination, and then pick one day to try that thing. Just pick a day. Plan for one day. Don't plan every Wednesday for the rest of the year. You'll do copy work. Pick one day to do copy work. And really plan it well. Get the candles, find some beautiful music, give an assortment of pens, have some pretty paper, let everybody bring their own books to the table looking for something to copy. And that's your only agenda for the whole day. No math, no spelling, no dental appointments. Just you, copy work, and the desire to enjoy it. Bring that to the table one day. And when you're done, Grab your calendar and make notes in your calendar. Little tiny ones. How did it go? Or you could just put copy work and a great big check mark and know that you've done it and that it counts. Because even though you don't have it planned for every week for the rest of the year, that one satisfying, well prepared experience will build momentum in your homeschool. It's going to create the thing you long for. And that's what we're going to do all year with the Brave Rider Lifestyle. And here's another just little incentive in case you need one. We're going to talk about a lot of this stuff in depth in the Homeschool Alliance where I coach everybody. So if you get a taste of this and you want to join us for more in-depth conversation, that'll exist. That's not required. You can do this. Just follow along with us and start to build momentum in your homeschool. I want you to move beyond the fantasy self that is always living out in front of you in the future and help you start investing in the real you that's living in the now. So you can plan for one day. Guess what happens if one day goes well with your kids? Do they want to do it again? They do. Think about poetry tea time. How many of you know that's a runaway train going downhill once you've had a good poetry tea time? Well, could that happen with math? Could it? What do you think? Could it? Could it happen with math? Could you plan math well enough that your kids could have a great experience so that the next time it comes up, they aren't balking and hating you for it? That's what the Brave Writer lifestyle is. It is simply choosing deliberately to invest in quality experiences, to plan for them, to have them, and to celebrate them. To not schedule yourself to death, to not pretend you're someone you're not, to not believe more in your schedule than in the moments of time you're investing right now. That's what we're about. That's how homeschool builds momentum. That's how you wake up in the morning and know you're doing a good job. And if you put those recorded experiences someplace where you can flip back through and see how you're doing on those days when you forget who you are, when you lose track of who you are, when you can't remember any successful experiences, you'll be able to go back to the calendar, flip through it and reassure yourself, oh yeah, that is who I am. That is what I'm doing. I am okay. I am a good person. I can make this happen. How about that? How about that? So what do you think? I want to see what you're writing here. Oh, so how honest. Kat says, I'm pretty sick of how much I loathe myself. You know, how can we have a happy homeschool if the central figure of that homeschool loathes herself? Can I just give you a big yummy love hug via digital video? You would not have taken on this responsibility if you did not have great connection with your kids and an imagination as big as the sky. You can do this. What we want to do is trust that what we're doing is beneficial to our children. 
not that there is something more to do that would be more beneficial if we could just be that person. So let me give you an example of this in my own life. Jacob loved science and was into astronomy and wanted to do, you know, baking and cooking because it's like chemistry, right? So one year I was at a homeschool convention and I bought one of those thick spiral bound kitchen chemistry experience experiments books. And I brought it home and I gave it to Jacob and I said, I bought this so that we can do these experiments together. He was so thrilled. He felt so loved. Then I asked him to go through and pick his favorite experiments. And he created note cards for me of ingredients to buy. I never once bought a single ingredient on a single note card. We did not do a single kitchen chemistry experiment that year. The one thing he wanted from me more than anything, the one thing I came home from a convention determined to do, the child who used copy work time to write beautiful note cards of ingredients for these experiments, I never did them. I didn't do one. Do you think I'm a good homeschool mom? My bad homeschool mom. Yeah, I regret that we didn't do any of those. Be ye not like me, do an experiment, but hello, science isn't my bag. No, he got an overdose of Shakespeare. <laughs> That's what our family's good at. He discovered his passion for human rights because of all of the conversations we had around human rights, all the documentaries I showed, all the books I was reading, and that changed the course of his life. He is on a full ride at Columbia Law becoming a human rights lawyer right now. So yeah, it might have been nice to do some kitchen chemistry experiments, but the success or failure of my homeschool did not ride on that. And guess what? I was imagining a fantasy Julie that did not exist. I didn't know what to do with borax. I wasn't able to go to those special stores and find ammonia. I was intimidated by beakers and test tubes. Not in my bag not my gig. And in fact, he did great in his chemistry class because he finally got to do that stuff and he discovered, yeah, I don't really want to be a chemist. It was a passing fancy. It was me trying to meet the need of my child. Absolutely felt like love when I brought home that book. Didn't feel so much like love when I failed to do it. <laughs> I just need you to understand that who you are is adequate and you're going to drop the ball. You're going to plan, schedule, fantasize, imagine. Maybe you're not a crafty parent. And all around you are these parents who are crafty parents. Maybe you're not a party thrower and all around you are these party throwers. Maybe you're not a read aloud parent and everywhere you turn, everyone acts like reading aloud is the only way to have a good homeschool. Figure out who you are. Be that person. That's the person that's adequate for your homeschool. The person you are today, not the person you think you'll be in April. The person who has passion, vision, interests, curiosities, bring those to the table, put them on full display, indulge them completely. Let's say you love knitting. There should be time every day, everyone in your house sees you knitting, and you should make Needles and yarn abundantly available. You know why? It'll be easy for you to teach. And you know how much good stuff goes on when you're teaching knitting? There's counting, there's dividing, there's keeping track, there's, you know, um, attention to detail, performance values, there's artistic vision. My gosh, knitting is so rich. And there's a whole tradition around knitting and a whole philosophy around types of yarn and size of needles and what you knit and for whom. You could take knitting so far and you might never do a single kitchen chemistry experiment and your kids will learn so much from knitting. Be who you are. Be who you are in your homeschool. And imagine the you you are today while you're making your purchases. Purchase the things that you know you're excited to implement because those will get done. And the things you're not excited to implement, two options. Pick something low key, a workbook, whatever that you can supervise, and then find a passionate adult for that subject and get your kids connected to that person once in a while. Maybe through tutorial, 
maybe through a, a visit to a, a, an observatory. You know, I wasn't an uh, astronomer. When Jacob got passionate about that, I drove him to the observatory and he met old men in their 60s and 70s and 80s who showed him huge, amazing telescopes and how to see the sky and how to use our telescope because I didn't know how. I was able to create the connection. I didn't have to provide the instruction. And that's what you can do. You can provide the connection. You can, you know, do that sort of routine practice. Yeah, they need math. Maybe math isn't your bag. So you sustain it with your textbook and occasionally you enliven it with a math game or some cool math video online. I mean, there are so many resources today. Or you hook up with your friend who's great at math and you say, can you throw a math party? We'll come. <laughs> you know, be creative. We'll bake all the cakes if you'll just come up with a bunch of ways to apply math that I haven't thought of because I need help. Does this make sense? Are you catching on to what I'm saying? So, yes, it is Cyber Monday. For those who are joining late, use Celebrate 17 to get 30% off all of our Brave Writer products. Buy the ones you're going to use. Don't buy the ones for the fantasy self. <laughs> and join us on the Brave Writer Lifestyle deep dive for this year. Here it is. Where it's a calendar that you're going to use to record all the ways you implement the lifestyle one month at a time, one idea at a time. So you may have seen like the list of Brave Writer lifestyle things, you know, poetry, copywork, Shakespeare, art, nature, one on one time, big, juicy conversations. And you think to yourself, how do I get all these plates spinning at once? Here's the pro tip. You don't. You do them one at a time. You deep dive for a month and you move on. You don't have to do Shakespeare every month of the homeschool year to have a good Shakespeare experience. See what I'm saying? So I'm going to help you. You can join me on Instagram, and we're going to talk about it all year, every month. You can use your own calendar that you got from your Allstate agent, or you can buy ours. It's on sale for 10 bucks today at Zazzle. And we are going to help you become comfortable in your own skin, being the home educator you were born to be not the one you fantasize about being. You understanding? How's everybody doing? Let me just scroll through the comments for a minute. Yeah, so Patience says that she wonders if I sent him somewhere else to learn science. Yes, <laughs> we used to co-op and he took biology there and he took chemistry at our local high school and he did some experiments totally on his own. He wasn't ready to wait for me. He went ahead and figured some out on his own. Yeah. And then we, we were very involved with the observatory here in Cincinnati and astronomy. But here's the truth. Science just wasn't our family culture. And his interest in it waned. And what took over was his interest in the things that actually represented more of who we are. And you know what? It's okay. Your family has a story. It has a trajectory. It has a culture. Your kids are going to pick it up. Now, they may veer off and do things that you aren't good at, like my son, Liam. He is phenomenal at theoretical math. We never did theoretical math when he was growing up. In fact, in high school, he stepped out of the college prep class and he went to like Algebra 3 or something because he just wasn't interested in the way it was being taught. And then he gets off to college and he's suddenly like the smartest math kid in the school. I think that's fascinating. I had nothing to do with that. His brain aptitude was there. He was put in a context where he got to explore it, and he has exploded in his understanding. But all of what we did leading up to that, the way we talk, the way we, are, the way we think through logic problems, the way we uh, understand literature, has been a part of him becoming fascinated with math. And guess how he accessed math? Not through rote instruction, but through Euclid and non-Euclidean geometry. He's reading original works in old archaic language and understanding it through the lens of philosophy. Well, yeah, that lines right up with our family culture. That's who we were. Do you see what I'm saying? You can trust it. You can trust it. Yeah, somebody said, my kids will not absorb Shakespeare. Well, there's no crime. If Shakespeare isn't your bag, exposing them to it, great. If it's not your thing, it's not your thing. Lots of people get by in life without Shakespeare. Do I love Shakespeare? Yes. I'm as passionate about Shakespeare as my friend Ingwan is about calculus. 
She wants everyone to love calculus. I want everyone to love Shakespeare. Not happening. <laughs> so somebody's asking about the calendar. So let me review. Our team member, Jeanette, created a Brave Writer Lifestyle calendar. And each month, we feature a different aspect of the Brave Writer Lifestyle. TV and movies, big juicy conversations, nature journaling, playing language games. And for each month this year, I am going to create a community free, no money uh, passes hands here, um, to go through the Brave Writer Lifestyle one idea at a time. You can sign up for our free newsletter list. It'll come out just once a month. You'll get one email a month from that list. And it will have a handwritten Julie's tips for that, uh, that month. And then on Instagram, I am going to post photos and we will share with hashtags and we will get to participate together. I'm trying to get on Instagram talk at the same time. Uh, we will get to spend time together doing read aloud, doing movies and TV. I'll give tips, we'll share photos, we'll discuss ways to implement so that if it's hard for you, you will have the support you've been craving. Okay, let me show you my Julie Brave Writer account. <laughs> I can't do two things at once. All right, do you see? Julie Brave Writer. So that's how you join on Instagram, okay? And we're going to use the Brave Writer Lifestyle hashtag and build community. Because what you really need is just good friends and people to remind you not to try and be like everyone else. Be your own version of you within this context. So, for instance, January is reading aloud. And a lot of people are sold on reading aloud and there's whole communities dedicated to reading aloud, like read aloud revival and all kinds of books out there. There's so many ways to get involved in reading aloud. What if that's not your thing? How do we help you incorporate it a little bit? How do we help your kids a little bit? What is the goal of reading aloud? Well, in my opinion, the goal of it is a shared family experience around literature. You can get that through audiobooks. Ha. Here's a secret for you. You can even get it through movies. <laughs> I mean, our family relationship with Lord of the Rings, it came through movies for me. I didn't like reading the books. I didn't get interested in Pride and Prejudice until we watched Colin Firth. You hear what I'm saying? <laughs> so find a really good looking guy in one of those movies and then you'll get interested in literature. That's my clue to you, the mothers. You're welcome. Um, <laughs> You know, Aragon, I mean, he's pretty cute. Uh, yeah. So part of what I'm trying to say is this. Give yourself permission to be the you that you are. Work on your family's culture and homeschool one month at a time. Do it in community. Scale back the scheduling. Plan. Plan by investing in the idea and the topic. Read about it. Get it inside of you. And then find one day in a month to do it and really experience it, and then jot it down in your calendar. And over time, you build momentum in your homeschool when you do that. That is how you grow as a home educator, okay? All right, any questions before I go? I'm going to do a quick recap. Today, everything in Brave Writer is 30% off. You use this code, CELEBRATE17, so you can buy the Writer's Jungle, you can buy the Arrows, the Boomerangs, Faltering Ownership, Partnership Writing, the Bundles. It's the only day of the year we have a sale like this. And we don't even have it every Cyber Monday. So this is a big deal. If you had your sights set on something, now's the time. It does not apply to classes. Our classes open for spring registration next Monday. And I'll do a Facebook Live later this week all about that. Uh, my books, A Gracious Space, these are 50 daily readings to help sustain your homeschool commitment. Amazon has them on sale. They are $9.95 if you want the print version. Or you can buy the Kindle version in our store and get 30% off. So up to you. But both exist. This is the winter, but we also have fall and spring. Um, I think that's everything. Let me make sure I've said it all. Yep. We opened our holiday shop today, which is all these, you know, gift ideas that we have, like T-shirts and the calendar. 
uh, and the Gracious Space books. So be sure to look there if you're looking for a Brave Writer fangirl product or gift. I love our t-shirts. They are all the hashtags that we love to use in Brave Writer. So that's a fun one for your friends. Uh, I actually ordered a black shirt that's coming. So I'm sure I'll be wearing that coming up in the next few weeks. Thanks for joining me today. So let's recap on being your best self. Ready? The homeschooler you are today is the homeschooler you will be in March. Do not plan next semester as though you will be a new person. You will not. It's okay to admit that you're never going to do kitchen chemistry or you may never read aloud or copy work isn't your thing. It's okay to admit that. Focus on your strengths, the things that make you curious, that draw your enthusiasm first. And get deep into those. Start to notice all the contours of what that is and share it freely with your children. And then note it on your calendar so that you can prove to yourself that you're the awesome homeschool parent that you actually are. And then you can start sharing from your wisdom with the rest of us about how knitting transformed your family's life, about how crossbreeding fish in the creek was the revolutionary thing of your family. Do you see what I'm saying? Be who you are, all in. Plan for that. Don't schedule it, plan for it. Be alert to it. Give yourself credit for it. You got it? All right. So thanks for joining. Have a great day and I'll see you online. Come by Instagram and say hi.